Where does the Bible say that it is the Word of God? Where does the Bible say that it is the Word of God? <coughs> Where does the Bible say that it is the Word of God? In Joshua 1 8, where it says, This word of the law shall not depart from your mouth. When Joshua 1 8 said that, it did not include itself, because it would have been referring presumably to the Pentateuch. In Psalm 119, when it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path, it did not refer to itself. Because Psalm 119, when it was written, was not yet in the canon of Scripture. Would have been a contemporary song when it was written. Much like you'd hear from contemporary Christian music today. Like hill songs, like Jesus culture. Psalm 119 would have been like that in its day. So it definitely was not referring to itself. With this great distance of time, to us, Psalm 119 sounds like great... <coughs> mysterious, holy scripture. But when it was written, it was contemporary. It was modern in its time. So it was clearly not referring to itself when it said that thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It would have been referring presumably to the Pentateuch, the Torah, maybe some prophetic books by that time. I'm not entirely certain about the timing of when each book became part of the canon of scripture but it was not referring to itself when uh, galatians 6 says that the sword of the spirit is the word of god it was not referring to itself because when it was written it was not part of the canon of scripture it was a contemporary letter, much like you'd see a, a popular minister writing a newsletter on the internet today. Probably weightier than that, but you get what I mean. So when Galatians 6 talks about the word of God being the sword of the spirit, it was not talking about itself. When the book of Revelation says that, if anyone takes away from the words of this testimony, God will take away from his rewards in heaven. It was not talking about the 66 books of the Bible as we know it today, if you're a Protestant. It was talking about itself, just the book of Revelation. When it says anyone who adds to the words of this testimony, God will add the plagues to him. It was not talking about the 66 books of the Bible as we know it today. It was talking about itself. So in that sense, the Bible never refers to itself because the Bible did not exist while the Bible was being written. The 66 books of the Bible that we know today, that most Christians would know today, some, some Christian groups uh, do not have the exact same 66 books as the canon of scripture. But uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of beside the point. What I'm saying is that the Bible never refers to itself as the Bible because all the 66 books were written over a span of thousands of years. 
it was not someone who sat down and said, hey, I'm going to write this huge volume. Even Tolkien with his seven books of The Lord of the Rings took 14 years to write that. The Bible writers were not a committee, were not an editorial committee. The Bible writers did not know that they were writing a Bible. They just wrote their individual books and letters and collection of poems. The Bible as we know it was created by the early church somewhere in the 3rd century AD, which would be something like two centuries after the <clears throat> earliest known Gospels were written. So when people say that the Bible is the Word of God, these same people usually say that the Bible is the highest authority of anything. And if that were the case, then there is a circular logic here that the Bible cannot be the Word of God unless the Bible says it is the Word of God because the Bible is the highest authority. But the Bible, as we've shown, never talks about itself because it was not written as one book. I never think of the Bible as one book. I think of the Bible more like a, um, I don't know, maybe a bookshelf in a particular category in a library, it is a collection of 66 books that are remarkably harmonious in their message. But nevertheless, they are not 66 chapters of one book. They are a collection of 66 different books from differing genres. So the Bible never says that it is the Word of God. The usage of the phrase, the Word of God, does refer to the canon of Scripture in their time. So when in Joshua 1.8, it says that this word of the law shall not, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. It's talking about the Scripture of their time, at the time Joshua 1.8 was written. And Joshua 1.8 was a modern book during its time. It was referring to the ancient Scriptures, the books of Moses. And when Psalm 119 was written as a contemporary piece of music, it was not referring to itself as the Word of God. It was referring to the accepted scripture of its time, which presumably would include the Torah, the books of Moses, and like I said, possibly some books of the prophets. When Paul wrote the letter to the Galatians, the churches of Galatia, and he talked about the Word of God, he was not talking about the New Testament because it did not exist. He was talking about the Old Testament, the Torah, perhaps the Tanakh, as Paul would have known it in his time. Where am I getting with this? We, in our 21st century post-evangelical Christianity, believe and assume that the Bible is the Word of God. Because somewhere in, in the pages of these 66 books, it talks about the Word of God being the Scriptures. But the idea that these 66 books are the Scriptures only began in the, about the 3rd century A.D., way after the 66 books themselves were written. So, we in our 20th, maybe earlier, maybe the 19th, 18th even, centuries, the modern era, till today the 21st century, we look back in time upon these scriptures that have been written over thousands of years in a few different ancient languages in various genres. And we see that in it, there are references to the scripture of their day being called the Word of God. And we impute upon them our understanding of what the scriptures are, which are the 66 books. And we say, therefore, these 66 books are the Word of God. But it is not. 
faithful to the usage of the phrase, the word of God itself. Because the 66 books were not written as one book. They are a compilation over vast eras of time. Why am I going on so strongly about this point? It is because within the Bible, in one of its books, it does say what the Word of God is. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this, of course, is referring to Christ. Christ is the Word of God. This is not a statement of law, not a rational statement. It's a spiritual statement and a mystical statement that Christ could be a man and a God and the Word of God. It's not something that can be parsed rationally, logically, intellectually. It's a statement of mystery that for millennia people have been talking about a collection of written scriptures being the Word of God. First the Pentateuch, then the Tanakh, then the Old and New Testaments being the Word of God. But through the revelation of the Spirit to the Apostle John, it was said that Christ the Man, Christ the Divine, is the Word of God. In other words, no longer a collection of words, no longer words, scripture written on scrolls and parchments and codex and specially invented Bible paper. It is the man, Christ, the divine Christ. He is the Word of God. He is the revelation of who God is. This Christ himself, Jesus of Nazareth, said in his time to the people of his time, he said to them, you search the scriptures because you think in them you will have life, but you do not come to me that I might give you life. So, I come from an evangelical background where much emphasis is given on scripture, on Bible study. And we really, really study it really hard because we believe in them we find the answers to life, to death, to the universe and everything. But Jesus said, You do not come to me that I might give you life. We search the scriptures because we're trying to find life. We're trying to discover the words of life. But Jesus said, Come to me that I might give you life. The thing that we work so hard to try and discover by our sweat and effort that we try to purchase with our study, He gives freely to all who come to Him. And in that idea of coming to Christ, there is a mystery. How on earth do you come to Christ? If he were still physically walking the earth, you could just walk up to him. And probably that's what they could have done in that time. He was talking to them in physical form. You do not come to me, he said. How would they have come to him? 
it would have just come to him probably like Nicodemus did at night probably say hey Jesus can I have a word can we break bread together could we have a goblet of wine together could we go fishing together could we sit down in the temple and talk like you did when you were 12 And so it is not an intellectual pursuit. It is a relational pursuit. Today we come to Christ through the work of the Spirit of Christ. And so here we are talking about mystical things, mysteries, spiritual things, experiential things. And some people get scared because they're afraid that if you go into mysterious spiritual things you might fly off the handle you might go off on a tangent you might get out of orbit and go off into space floating forever and ever like uh, Sandra Bullock almost did in gravity and so they cling to the written words the words on parchments and scrolls and Bible paper they cling to the scriptures for safety holding on for dear life just like Jesus said, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have life. We think we have life. But life does not come by thinking. Life comes by approaching the Christ. By the Spirit and the Word. Today Christ is not physically present on earth. How do we come to Christ? by His Spirit, and His Spirit lives in His people. The Holy Spirit does not float around over your shoulder somewhere. The Holy Spirit lives in whomever has received Him into their being. How do we come to Christ? First, by the Spirit in ourselves and by the Spirit in one another. And of course, by the Scriptures as well, for they have revealed what has already been revealed to mankind. And been recorded and by the circumstances that the Spirit leads us into just like the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted that is tested for 40 days the Spirit also leads us into circumstances by which we come to Christ by the Word by the Spirit by the people by the circumstances of God, do we come to Christ? Do we come to know life and to know God? Not in the scriptures. The scriptures are not the word of God in the sense that has been revealed to us. Christ is the word of God. Let me end by saying that, with, you know that silly little game, what would you take with you if you could only take one thing and you were trapped on a desert island? Let me say to you that I would take my Bible. Actually, my first choice would be to take a satellite phone. But if you're playing this silly little, little game and you have a silly little rule that no, you can't take a satellite phone because that's what everyone would take. If you do not allow me to take a satellite phone on this little desert island trip, I would take my Bible because there is no physical possession that I consider more valuable. But it is not anywhere near as valuable as the relationship that I have with the Word of God, Jesus Christ, through the Spirit of God, whom Jesus Christ has sent into the world after His ascension out of the world back into heaven. Let me say to you that you do not find life by studying scriptures 
as important as that is. As important as biblical literacy is. Way more than Shakespeare. Way more than the Lord of the Rings. Way more than how to win friends and influence people. As important as biblical literacy is, you will not find life in it. You only find life by coming to Christ through a mysterious, unfortunately, mystical spiritual experience through the Spirit of Christ, the people of Christ, and Christ himself, the Word of God, and the circumstances which the Spirit brings you in. God bless you.